Hi, my name is Andre. 10 years ago, I decided to turn my lifelong passion for cars into a job, so I became an automotive journalist slash writer. Over the years, I've had the chance to drive dozens and dozens of cars, and this has allowed me to fine tune and narrow down my selection of what cars I like. I am an automotive enthusiast, I like driving sporty cars, I like cars that are fun to drive, I don't like overly powerful or overly expensive cars, and generally I just like to have fun behind the wheel. Since I started this channel nearly three years ago, I've driven probably around 100 cars, but I've never had the chance to drive my favorite small, quick drop top, the Mini Cooper S. The first time I drove one of these was around five years ago, when the model received its first facelift. This car is almost 10 years old, by the way. And the car I drove back then was a similar spec to this one. Drop top Cooper S, not the more powerful JCW version with 230 horsepower, just 180, and some comfort and style options. And I remember taking that car on a different mountain road to this one and having an absolute blast with it. I remember having much more fun with that car than I did with cars costing three times as much and with three times the power output. And now that I've had the chance to drive one again, and I've taken it to my favorite mountain road, which is this gorgeous ribbon of tarmac that is just laid over this hill here. It is fantastic. It is a hidden gem, this road. So the car that I'm driving today is a Mini Cooper S Cabriolet Sidewalk Edition, which costs 43,000 euros. The base Cooper S Cabriolet is around 37,000 euros. I'm going to walk you around the vehicle, highlighting some of the elements that I find interesting. Then I'm going to take it for a drive and try to better express my love for this little drop top. So this is the 2021 facelift of the Mini Cooper S. It has a redesigned front area. Well, the grille is redesigned. It has these real intakes here that feed air to the brakes. And it also has these slats here that bring air into the wheel well to smoothen the airflow and help relieve pressure. You know that this is the Cooper S if this quite aggressive front end wasn't indication enough, but you can tell it by the S badge. Since this is the sidewalk edition, it has these stripes that run up the hood and they have a unique texture that you can also find inside the vehicle and I'll show you that in a second. I also need to express how much I love this paint job. It is called Deep Laguna Metallic and it is gorgeous. It is, I'm not even sure, I guess I would call it turquoise. It's like a dark teal with, um, it's slightly more bluish than greenish. This car rides on 17 inch wheels shod in Hancock Ventus S1 Evo 3 tires, which are okay. They are supposed to be ultra high performance tires, but let me tell you, there are no Michelin or Goodyear or really any of the other top brands. I mean, the car really, really does want to push wide when you drive it hard with these tires. A nice set of Michelins would have served this car so much better. You can tell that this is the sidewalk special special edition by this trim, which is around this trim with the S badge here. It features the same pattern that you saw on the stripes on the hood, and it's also uh, embossed, so you feel it when you run your hand over it. The sidewalk logo and the pattern have a little bit of blue in them, which perfectly matches the deep Laguna metallic finish that this car has. The 2021 facelift changed the front face just slightly. The headlights are still the same as is the hood, but the mirrors are different. They actually have this crease here that you can see. The older generation mirrors were a bit more um, rounded and friendly. These are a bit more aggressive. Mini launched this vehicle in 2013. Well, the, the hard top and then the soft top debuted like two years later. So in 2025, this will be 10 years old. Although by that time, it will have been replaced by the all new Mini, which is an EV first vehicle. So Mini is putting more emphasis on the electric versions than it is on the combustion versions. What really makes this vehicle great is just how small it is. Just look at this wheelbase, it's so tiny. And the overhangs, they are also very small, especially in the back. The overhang in the rear is this much. It's amazing. And it's just 3.8 meters long. It is a really, really well-proportioned thing. And it not only looks good, in my opinion at least, but it also bestows it with amazing handling characteristics. With the 2021 facelift, the Cooper S got a new rear bumper, which I really, really like. I think it is a better design than before. It still has the twin central exhausts that are now a Mini Cooper S trademark, but the bumper design itself is just a bit more aggressive. I especially like this element here. It does protrude a little bit, and I think it really, really makes the car look square and it improves the car's stance significantly in my view. 
The Union Jack rear lights have been present for a few years. The 2021 facelift is actually this generation Mini's second one, and Mini didn't feel the need to change these for this new version. I still really like these rear lights, but for the US market, where the indicators are red, they are a bit disorienting. So while for Europe, only this strip lights up when you indicate. In the US, this entire arrow section begins blinking and the arrow is pointing in the opposite direction to the one that you're about to turn in. If you're familiar with mini cabriolets, then you know the way to open the cargo compartment in the back is to pull this down, which is kind of an unusual solution, but this needs to be stiff so that the car has a rigidity in this area. As you see it, the trunk has a capacity of 160 liters. You have these two handles here, this one and this one. So you release them like this, and then you can supposedly raise this to give you a little bit of extra cargo room temporarily. This can actually hold 80 kilograms, but it, the way it's bending, I think it's suggesting I'm over 80 kg. Now I'm going to briefly show you the interior and then we're going to go for a drive on this fantastic twisty road. The first order of business is for me to show you how much room there is in the back seat, which is really, really vertical and um, it doesn't look very accommodating, but let's see. At least you get a lot of headroom and the fact that you can step in makes it cool, I guess. It's surprisingly bearable. If you put up the headrest, my main gripe with this is the fact that the backrest is just so vertical and it really pushes you forward. You, you really need to have good posture or you can obtain a good posture if you ride in the back of this car. But honestly, it's not that bad. I think I could do maybe 50, 70 kilometers in this car before I really, really started to complain. If I were to sit behind myself in my driving position, it would be just impossible. There's nothing here. You do get two small pockets here on the sides where you can put, I think you can put a half liter bottle and then a big cup holder in the center here. You get your carbon carbon tweeter and speaker. I really like that all the windows go down, so you get this nice flat look. I actually find it more accommodating than I was expecting to. Let me put the wind deflector up and then I'll show you the front. So the wind deflector is supposed to be quite easy to uh, install. In my experience, this does make a little bit of a difference, but it's not a huge difference. It was reasonably easy. The driver's seat is properly palatial in any Mini Cooper, especially one with these sport seats with the adjustable thigh support that I so like. The driving position is spot on as you would expect in any BMW. The steering wheel is nice and thick and it's really sporty. It is new for the facelift. I'm not sure about the buttons to be honest. I think they are, they move a bit and they feel lower quality than before, but I really like the paddles because they are bigger and you have easier access and they even have a little ridge here so that you can you have more um, traction to pull it so your hand doesn't slip off the paddle accidentally. I really like it. A little burble as the car starts up. The big change in the interior that Mini brought with the facelift is the fact that it swapped out the analog gauge cluster with this fully digital one that first debuted on the electric Mini Cooper SE. I actually preferred the previous system with its analog gauge, although the rev counter is actually still analog, you just can't see it when it is turned off. So unless it's backlit, you don't really see anything. Oh yeah, and don't buy the, the head-up display because it's the flippy uppy type and it's not very good. Just save the money. It's time to take this for a drive and I'll tell you more about why I think it's so special. And it has a lot to do with its driving dynamics. I'm gonna put it in sport. Disable traction control because you kind of have to in this vehicle to really enjoy it. Put the gearbox in sport. Let's do a launch. So this vehicle has a two liter engine, the BMW B48. In this state of tune, it makes 180 horsepower and 280 Newton meters of torque, which is enough to push this little mini to 100 kilometers per hour in 6.6 .6 seconds and onto 230 kilometers per hour, which is more than enough for a vehicle that's this light. As a drop top, it weighs around 1,320 kilograms, which is around 120 more than the, the hardtop two-door or three-door model if you're in Europe. The hardtop is quicker by two tenths to sprint to 100 kilometers per hour. So that achieves the sprint in 6.4 seconds and its top speed is five kilometers per hour quicker. Another thing you won't feel in this car is a lack of rigidity from its chassis. 
even with the top down, the Mini Cooper S Cabriolet still feels really, really stiff, even across weird undulations in the road. You get nothing through the steering column, which is where you can usually tell the easiest that a car isn't especially stiff. But this, you just point it in the direction that you want. And just power away. I really, really like this engine. It feels really, really boosty, but in a good way. I mean, when the turbo comes on at around 2000 RPM, it feels like a lot more than 280 Newton meters, let me tell you. And this car generally feels way quicker than the figures suggest. I mean, it keeps pulling way past 200 kilometers per hour with ease. This comes courtesy of its low weight of just 1.3 tons in this configuration. <laughs> One of my favorite things about this engine, performance aside, which I find remarkable for 180 horsepower, but it's the nice turbo noises that it makes. You not only hear whooshing, but you also hear really, really satisfying wastegate flutter. You can hear it at lower RPMs, where you just give it more gas and then lift off. I could do this all day. Ah, the lovely Hankook tires. Ready to give up earlier than you would expect. Thankfully, this car has a fantastic chassis and it makes up for the mediocre tires. I feel that Mini has tamed the exhaust noise a little bit for the facelifted model. I can't remember if the previous one had a particulate filter, it probably didn't. And it just used to parp and bang a little bit when you upshift it. But this one doesn't do that anymore. It's still fun and you can derive a lot of enjoyment from just listening to the engine. But it's not quite as good as before. <laughs> There are few cars that are as pointy as this one. The steering doesn't give you an exceptional amount of feel, but it's okay, and it makes up with its pin-sharp precision, even off-center, which gives the car a very unique, darty feeling, which some people might hate, but I wholeheartedly love. Boy, this thing really, really grips. What a special little car. I'm sure you're going to have a hard time justifying other cars' high prices, but this is such a unique proposition that's only really challenged by the Mazda MX-5. Although the Miata offers a completely different driving experience to this. That is softer, it's rear-wheel drive, so the tail steps out, but it's kind of a more relaxed car. This one is more precise and immediate, but even though they are different, I think the Mini drop top is the Mazda's only real rival. But it's really hard to pick one of these two cars. The Mazda is more raw, but it's also a bit slower than this. I mean, I don't think that could keep up with this on this road. This thing just takes off. And I think that even with the, the Hancock tires, this can still maintain a lot of speed through the corners without stressing the tires too much. Another thing I like is the fact that you don't feel like you need a limited slip differential in this car as much as you do in some other higher-powered front-wheel drive vehicles. 
that are somewhat performance oriented. You can get the Mini Cooper S with a limited slip differential and it's sure to improve things further, especially on corner exit when you want to put the power down. And this does sometimes occasionally squander it. I mean, you can hear the tire spinning the power away. But for me, that just adds to the fun especially since this isn't an out and out hot hatch. You buy this car if you live in the city and you don't need too much space, you just need seats to carry yourself, another person and occasionally someone else in the back with minimal luggage. And the person who would buy this car really ought to take it to a road like this occasionally because this is where the Mini Cooper S is in its element. It's unquestionably one of the best cars in the world at doing what I'm doing right now. No matter how much money you have, you're not gonna have that much more fun than me. This feels like the perfect package. 180 horsepower seems just about enough. Nothing grips the road like this. It just wants to rotate. It's really, really nice. What a fantastic car. I'm definitely going to be quite sad when I return this car to BMW as I was last time that I drove one. That pretty much sums things up. Thank you for watching until the end, and I'll see you in the next one.